Well, how do we begin the flip? And really it began with understanding that we weren't meeting the needs of students, right? And so we, we really needed to understand what our process was. And so we analyzed our process and we found that 80% of our time in class was spent talking to students. And, you know, students were passively engaged. And many of them weren't paying attention. Many of them were, had, you know, distracted or what have you, especially with handheld devices and so forth. And so we need to have a more in-tune, active environment that's fully supportive of the students. And we weren't providing that because of the way in which we were designed. We were designed in, to talk to kids, present information to students, and then, then do homework at, at home, right? And so much of our lessons were built on reviewing the previous day's homework, reviewing a new lesson, maybe doing a few problems together, and then do the rest at home. That's, what, that's how we were designed. And so we found that we were designed, 80% of the time was built for lecture, 20% of the time was built for, you know, student activity. Now, when you threw in all the interruptions, when you threw in, you know, the PA going off, when you threw in someone walking by the teacher, we've all been there, where the, where the student walks right by the teacher in order to maybe sharpen their pencil or to, you know, to grab a Kleenex or to, you know, those things start and stop your classroom and the flow. And so if people come to the door even, you know, right? And so what we found is we found that with all those what we call time thieves, these are things that take away from the classroom experience, right? So that 80% suddenly, because you have to start and stop all the time, suddenly that 80% becomes 85, 90, even 95%. And so if you have a classroom that's constantly interrupted, or you have to start and stop, you know, as a, as a school, uh, the things, you know, such as PAs are going off, you know, throughout the day, you know, because people are trying to get other people's attention. Well, the problem is, is that every time you, you start, you have to, you're stop, you have to start again, and that just interrupts the whole process. And so even though we thought we were 80-20, we're actually 99 to 1, as I call it. And so what we found is we found that, you know, when we referred to our classroom instruction of what we actually wanted to flip, we started with a, what we call, you know, 80-20, meaning what we wanted to do is we wanted to flip our core of what we did. Now, we we actually did put some things in place so that we could, you know, reduce the amount of, you know, interruptions and so forth and the routines that we taught and so forth to maximize the time together. So that's that's one thing. But at the core, what we wanted to do is we wanted to spend 20% of our class time actually lecturing students. And 80% of our class time was built around student or class activity. Now, the one thing is, is that, you know, people ask me all the time when they came to visit and more and more about our school, is that, is that just the rule? Is that the rule all the time? 80-20, 80-20. No, it can be a gradual 80-20 you know, throughout your unit. So you may have to lecture some to your students at the beginning, but over time, if you did 20 days, right, of a unit, 15 of those days, 16 of those days was built on student activity. So you may spend some days maybe lecturing a little bit, but on a whole, what you want to do is you want to build your classroom plan around the 80-20 concept. 80% 80 of the time, you're going to be spending practicing with your students. 20% 20 of the time, you want to spend on more teacher-driven things, right? So lecture, review, um, you know, setting up the routines and so forth in class, right? And so now, if you have a tough unit to get through, then you might want to consider doing maybe, you know, 80-20 to begin where it's more teacher-heavy, but transitioning into more 50-50 to 20-80, as we call, you know, the transition, right? So the 20-80 is actually reversed, all right? So you can, you know, it's flexible in your design. But right now, what we want to do is we want to get you to practice on redesigning your unit so that you spend more practice, you know, time practicing with your students rather than just your traditional, you know, 80-20, as we talked about before. Flip the 80-20. You know, can you practice more with your students? Maybe 80% of the year time you spend in the class practicing with your students and 20% of the time is more 
managerial or things that you have to tell them or even uh, a short little lecture or what have you, okay? And so that's what 80-20 actually means. And that's what the flip, actually that's how we arrived at 80-20 is that when we looked at, at uh, what we were designed like in class, we found that we spent 80% of our time lecturing and 20% of our time actually um, practicing. And so we want, what we want to do is we want to reverse that or flip that or invert that. You know, invert that so that, you know, we spend most of our time practicing with our kids. But we give ourselves the flexibility if we have difficult subjects where we need more hand-holding by the teacher. We use what we call an 80-20 progression, you know, within our unit to make sure that we we're moving to where it's more student ownership and practice rather than teacher driven. And so remember, who are we, what are we practicing for in order to provide students the opportunity to become expert? We already know that we're expert. So we're, we're transitioning our expertise from us to them. And the only way to do that is for them to practice. All right, thanks.